Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to make a very basic water in oil emulsion. Now remember that when you're creating a water in oil emulsion, you are making oil the external phase. So a couple of things to be careful of. Because the majority of this formula, or at least the continuous phase of this formula, is going to be oil, if you're using straight vegetable oils, it can feel very heavy and greasy. And this is often not desired by consumers. So you will need to make sure that the oils or lipids you use in this formula have quite a light skin feel and a nice silky finish to them rather than vegetable oils which when used in this type of formula can tend to feel quite heavy and draggy and even greasy on the skin when used in high amounts. So you could still add some vegetable oils but keep the input quite low. Uh, compared to using a caprylic capric triglycerides uh, or using a very light skin fill ester instead. They should make up the majority of your formulation. Now if your company philosophy allows it, you can also use various mineral oils, mineral oil derivatives and of course silicon materials which will give an even lighter skin feel again. Uh, the formulas that I'm going to be working with today are quite basic formulas that a lot of uh, home chemists can create from smaller raw material suppliers. But of course you can also create very elegant water and oil emulsions if you have access to some of the larger supplier materials and if your company philosophy allows you to use some of the light mineral oils, some of the synthetic light esters and of course if your philosophy allows you to use silicons as well. So the first product I'm going to show you how to create is a baby balm. So in this I have a fair bit of zinc oxide but again it's a water and oil emulsion so being a water and oil emulsion it will provide very good moisture barrier protection against transepidermal water loss and containing the zinc oxide it will have quite a good antibacterial function as well and you can of course swap uh, the zinc oxide in this formula for a calamine if you have it available to you uh, and that can also be used as quite a skin friendly balm. Now what I'm starting with here, I've already measured out my water phase which is quite simple, it's just a small amount of water and some glycerin present. Now remember the water content of these products is kept quite low because the water makes up the internal dispersed phase. So we need quite a large external uh, oil phase, so this is going to make the majority of our formula. So in this bowl here I have already measured out my lipids. Now you can pick any lipids you want. In my example I am using caprylic capric triglycerides and coco caprylate and this is just to give the product a lighter skin feel so that when it's applied and again you'll see the white from the zinc oxide because it's a baby balm product but it has quite a, a light skin feel and that is coming from the lighter emollients that I've selected. You can of course pick heavier vegetable oils but do be careful because the majority of this formula is oil so if you have a lot of vegetable oils it could feel quite heavy and greasy on the skin after it's applied. Now to these lipids I'm going to add my liquid low HLB non-ionic emulsifier. Now this is very very important uh, this particular emulsifier one of the reasons it's important that it is liquid so that my product doesn't become too viscous. Now I'm using Arlacel, an Arlacel product. And it needs to be low HLB so that it will form a water and oil emulsion. And being liquid it will keep the viscosity of this product to a nice cream consistency rather than becoming too balm like. Now while it's still liquid, I'm going to add my zinc oxide. This is just a standard USP grade zinc oxide. And I'm going to add this while I've still got all my liquids here so that I can wet it out thoroughly. Now to this, I am going to add 
a waxy low HLB emulsifier. In this case, I'm using beeswax, but you could easily use glycerol stearate, uh, sorbitan stearate, another low HLB waxy type emulsifier. And I'm also adding a, a oil compatible polymer. In this case, it's Oleocraft MP32 polyamide, and this will help stabilize my emulsion by forming a nice polymeric network to keep the water droplets away from each other within this water and oil emulsion. Now I'm going to heat my two phases and combine them like standard emulsion principles. Remember to keep stirring as it cools, particularly this example with the zinc oxide because the particles are quite heavy, you do need to keep stirring it as the oil continuous phase sets into your emulsion. The finished product will be very cream-like in consistency. Leave it overnight to set completely. Now once that has cooled below 40 degrees, you can add uh, extracts, you can add essential oils, your fragrances, your antioxidant, your preservative, of course, this is very important. Even though this is a water and oil emulsion, do not be tricked into thinking it doesn't need preservative because this particular formulation example has around 20% water and 5% humectant. And this would be an excellent food source. Plenty of water to help nourish any sort of microbial contamination that should occur in this product. So you do need to make sure you include a preservative and add it at a temperature, of course, that's suited to the product or below the 40 degrees. Now one of the other great things about water and oil emulsions is that you generally don't need to adjust the pH. You can check it, but it is hard to check because remember that pH is only carried in the water phase. And because there's such a relatively small amount of water in this uh, product, the water droplets are dispersed throughout the oil continuous medium, which makes it hard to check the pH because the charge is not carried consistently like it would in an oil and water emulsion where water would make your continuous phase. So it makes it very hard to measure it um, but it also makes it very hard to adjust it and also check it. So you generally don't need to worry about adjusting pH in these type of formulations either. One of the great things about these types of emulsions is their ability to hold moisture within the skin because of the continuous oil film. Remember, careful selection of lipids is crucial to make sure these products don't feel too heavy or greasy on application and after they've been applied to the skin and rubbed in. Be careful. Don't be tricked into thinking you can build viscosity into these formulas by adding a high input of low melting point butters. So for example, you would only add a maximum of 10% shea butter, cocoa butter, or coconut oil to this type of formulation. One, so that it doesn't end up feeling too greasy on application. But two, if you were to add around 10% or more of these low melting point butters, you will adversely affect the viscosity of the finished product in different climates. So the way it sets in a cool climate would then be very different to the product you have in a warm climate, which could be quite liquid. Instead, if you want to build extra viscosity into these types of formulations, you would simply replace some or all of the liquid non-ionic emulsifier that you saw me use with a waxy material, a waxy emulsifier that has low HLB instead. It's very important that all materials you use in these formulas are low HLB emulsifiers and or oil compatible polymers. If you use water compatible polymers such as xanthan gum or a carbamate in this type of formula, you will pull all the water droplets together and cause the product to separate. Instead, you need an oil compatible gum or polymer so that it creates a meshwork to stabilize and hold all those water droplets finely dispersed throughout the oil continuous phase. 
As another example, I have created a water and oil emulsion here. I've simply replaced the beeswax in this version uh, with glycerol stearate. And I've also added some lecithin. Now I've added the lecithin. It is also a low HLB emulsifying product. It's a liquid, but it's got a beautiful cushiony feel to the skin. So I've used it in this product so that I've got a really elegant feeling, natural based water and oil emulsion. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on how to create your basic water and oil emulsions. Happy formulating!